Hi everyone, welcome to Research MD. This is uh, Dr. Pramil. Um, I work in the United States as Chief Medical Officer, also an Associate Professor of Medicine. So today um, we're going to talk about a very, very important topic, exploitation of doctors. And who is doing the exploitation of doctors? Have you ever heard somebody talking about exploiting doctors? Because the doctors are smart, they make a lot of money like any place else, you get a lot of respect. But one country in particular, my friend, has been doing a lot of bad things to the doctors and that country's name is what? Cuba. Okay. So what does Cuba do? Cuba exploit the doctors, use their uh, belief or the political gain and send it to the other countries. So before we go, let's talk about Cuba, a small island close to the United States, produce lots and lots of doctors. They got a machinery to produce doctors. I am not, you know, going into like uh, how much these people make, I mean, how qualified they are. They seems to be pretty uh, good doctors and, you know, that's not, I mean, I'm not going to criticize their medical school, but they produce a lot of doctors. So if you look at the number of doctors, you can compare. In Cuba, there's like nine doctors for 1,000 people. And compared in the United States, that number, two doctors for 1,000. Okay, and the health outcome is uh, Cuba is a little bit uh, better. Cuban doctors get paid the lowest in the world. I think maybe around thirty to seventy dollars an hour, kind of vary. That's all they pay. Um, so what does the Cuban government does is she force this doctor go to the South American countries where is the communist ideology and they have a relationship with them. Okay. So they tell, like uh, recently, let's look at the contract with the Brazil. They uh, had they sent around eight thousand dollars. They made this contract and sent these doctors over there, and they got three hundred and sixty-one million dollars in back. They are doing it uh, free. I mean, I mean, you know, you would be. I could understand if it is sent. The doctors went to someplace else and all that. So the doctors, so they pick and choose this doctor. They don't have any choice to go to the other countries. And they told them they have to go to the other countries. And when they go into the other countries, they still get paid a little bit more than that. Maybe around $300, uh, close to $300 per month. And uh, whenever they come back, they have to give like 70% back to the government. So pretty much their salary remains, doesn't matter, low, um, you know, wherever they go to, the, the, the salary is low. So let's go back to Brazil. What they did is they have a contract with the Brazilian government, right? And um, the Brazilian government gave $361 million and for like 8,000 doctors. And those doctors were sent. And who kept this $361 million? Not the poor doctors, the government kept it. And they did a lot of atrocious thing to the um, doctors when there. You know, some of those female doctors got pregnant by the Brazilian men and they didn't want them to stay in Brazil. Those is, they sent back to Cuba for uh, when they become, when they found out it was 22 weeks pregnant. And uh, so they sometimes they make this deal with uh, other countries because Cuba does not have, you know, their economy is not that great, right? Because in other Italian government, um, so what they do is like they need a lot of oil. So they said to Venezuela, send a lot of people there and then get oil in back and this doctors have to suffer. When you look at these doctors, when you go to these countries, they put it in like the worst places, um, and they had to work like 60, 80 hours per week, and they don't have any choice. Um, their very um, limited freedom was given. Forget the money and the conditions are like really bad, right? So all of this thing need to bring it up into the world community. Because you know, when you abuse people, it does not matter. Doctors not the one, uh, you know. Compared to if it is, uh, uh, if it is a, like a low-paying job, there's always the, you hear like a lot of noise going on all, all over the world, and they will say, oh, human trafficking, slave, all those kind of things. But why do the um, United Nations continue to ignore the global? Uh, trafficking of the doctors, that's what we need to look at it. 
okay? And the Cuban doctors, if they are going somewhere else, they should be given whatever the uh, doctors make in that country and they should be able to keep it. Not like this, uh, you know, mean, I mean, very low wages and they come back and they're treated like uh, um, very bad um, in the other countries also. Because the way the government treated, how do you get enough respect from them? And, um, you know, when you look at it, I think when there was, um, you know, recent COVID also, a lot of people were sent without proper training, uh, when there is an Ebola virus, a lot of uh, Cuban doctors were forced to go to um, Africa and work them, you know, under very bad conditions, okay? And um, they were treated, so the whole purpose of this talk to make sure, like, I mean, the doctors, anytime you exploit somebody is bad, I mean, you know, females, males, but when you come to doctors, I don't see any much, not much noise from the medical community also. So this is the time I think all of us need to show our support for the Cuban doctors and they should stop using the doctors for their political agenda. And if you're sending doctors on the other side of the world under different countries, people could die, you know, treating Ebola patients and all that. And what's going to happen to the family? Nobody, ta uh, uh, nobody help them out. That's the reality. And the doctors are like everybody else. They're humans and their concern need to be addressed. So United Nations, even the United States also has a big responsibility um, to address and write to the Cuban government to stop this atrocity, okay? Thank you so much for watching. God bless.